we'll see how it goes. And good evening, everybody. This is totally the wrong camera. I've just realized this. Anyone would think that I just set up a new overhead camera? Oh, dear. Absolute moron. Let's change that. But before we get into all that, today's video is brought to you by the Mike's Unboxing Dual Action Pen and Stylus, which you can pick up from the links in the video description. This pen is fantastic for writing purposes. And also with the soft stylus tip, you can use this to control your Android device, your iPad, your iPhone, or any other touch devices. So if you're a little bit scared of signing for things from deliveries, couriers, that kind of thing, grab your Mike's Unboxing Dual Action Stylus Pen and you can sign away in complete safety and style. Okay, that's enough self-publicizing. Let's get in. <laughs> oh, I've also forgotten something else. Hey Google, turn on studio light number two. Ah, that's better. And on the first day, God said, let there be light. Shut up. Evening everybody, it is Saturday the 17th of October 2020. How are you all doing tonight on this uh, starting to get rather autumnal evening at least here in the uk hopefully the weather is slightly better where you guys are at the moment uh yeah Angel said it's sunny. apparently in wales it's been sunny today but we're just a little bit across the bridge as some of you might know from the video we did about the uh flight sim 2020 when we did the quick trip across the uh is it the bristol channel i guess it is the bristol channel over from england over into wales and well the sun always shines over on wales ah <sighs> dear Sounds good now? Yep. Yeah, I forgot. I plugged in the overhead camera, which I've set up this week, and uh, I thought I'd give it a try, see what it's like. At the moment, it's using a Logitech camera, and I always forget to mute the extra mic on it. So I do apologize for the double audio. Tonight's video, or live stream, whichever you want to call it, is going to be about actually trying to build a PC for around about £600 for primarily for gaming with bits you can actually buy that are available in a moment stock is pretty much awful unless you're after ram storage motherboards actually seem to be pretty good cases not too bad but processors graphics cards it ain't looking good and actually i've noticed recently even coolers are starting to be very very scarce stocks are extremely limited and they're selling out pretty quickly so is it going to get worse on the ramp up to christmas at the moment i'd imagine there's not many people buying systems or building systems because they're waiting for the announcement on the 28th, the 29th, and for stock to come out on November the 5th. So where is all the stock? It should be should be piling up by now, I reckon. Anyway, that's enough of the intro. Let's uh, say hello to some of you lovely people in the chat this evening. And I haven't even opened up the pop-out chat. I am useless. Uh, is this gonna work? Yes, this seems to be working. So in the chat we've got Ugly Bob, Sky Stalker, Ghost Adder, British Noob, Matthew Day. Matthew Day's on the sausages tonight, gotta use them up. Uh <laughs> Moose Boy says hello everybody. Domus Mark says hello everyone. How you doing? Uh, who else we got? Dave Burns says uh shit shit shit. Demonetized. Glenn says evening troops. Ricardo says hi everyone again. Aletta's in the house. Billy K says yo the crew. Irie Wolfman, smiley face. Who's there else? Uh, some of the ones that come in early. Whenever I open the chat like this, it always erases them. So I'd imagine Angry Doge is in there somewhere. Gary's in the house as well. Nigel Thomas, Glenn, uh, Gen X UT. Mike is flexing. Flexing the pens. I am flexing a little bit, just uh, just got off the exercise bike. I've decided now I'm gonna do about 25 to 30 minutes of exercise bike exercise every single day, which is brilliant because who'd have thought if you do exercise, you could eat more pizza? Genius. Why has no one ever thought that before? Don't go on a diet, just exercise more and eat more. Win-win situation. Waldo is in the house. And says, hey Mike, have you already talked about the 600? Uh, no, not yet. This is, we're only, what, five minutes in. I'm still jibber-jabbering. Dave Bell says, it sounds good now. And John Sullivan says, hey guys. British Noob says, one minute late. That's basically on time. People that know me in the real world 
will pretty much know I'm late all the time. Not intentionally, it's just I get sidetracked. I get put off by things. My previous boss pretty much guaranteed almost every single day I was either turn up on the dot or sometime after the dot. It was a thing. I don't think we are on time, were we, until about March <laughs> yeah. after Christmas. Yeah, being on time for me is always a struggle. It really is. Getting up in the morning is a struggle. Who here is an evening person or an afternoon person? I detest mornings. Mornings are horrendous, especially if you live in the UK. They're generally one of three things, either dark, cold, or wet. More times than not, it's going to be all three of those things. So for those lucky people that live in like uh, Santa Cruz or uh, Pasadena, Cal basically California area, I envy you desperately. Waking up in the morning, sun still shining, nice and warm, probably about 20 degrees first thing in the morning. You lucky, lucky people. Anyway, a letter says here in Ohio, it was minus one this morning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think at the moment here, we're getting down to about five degrees, which uh, isn't great. I don't like the cold. And that's, actually, that's another reason why I've been doing the exercise and at least trying to get more exercise. You do find as you get older, your joints get stiffer. And as it gets colder, you're kind of like, Ugh, it's horrendous. So getting some exercise, getting on the exercise bike, getting the blood pump in, feels so good. Definitely, you should all do it. Most of us watching this at the moment, you're probably gonna be those pretty sedentary people sat in front of your PC, pretty much to probably eight, 12 hours a day. Do yourself a favor, get some exercise, get healthy, or at least get healthier, move around, it's good for you. And obviously enjoy beer and lager, pizza, crisps, sweets, chocolate. Those are key things to a healthy and fortuitous lifestyle. <laughs> uh, right, Markovsky says, anyone got or seen a 3300X yet? I think it's a rumor lol. Yeah. And Matthew Day says, you've kicked Kath and the cat off of the chair. Not entirely. Kath is still sat in the GT Racing or GT Player chair. This is the new one. This is the GT Racing Ace. As you can see, it says GT Racing Ace. This is the kind of slightly upgraded version of the, I'm not sure, what was that one called, Calf? Was it the R1 or something, or M1? I can never, oh, I can never remember. But basically, this is the uprated version. So finally, GT Racing of uh, heeded to our pleas and see me struggling on that horrible, horrible chair that I've been sitting in for God knows how long since Calf terribly stole my lovely chair. So now, now I can actually have some comfort. And this has actually got some upgraded features. So, oh, you can't really see it from there, but it's got the, the 4D arms. So they move all sorts of areas. Waking the Sorry, waking the cats. They've got Oops. a new bed. But anyway, so the cat's got a new bed. My camera bag, which normally sits on the other chair, which is here, but there's not enough room to have both chairs. So anyway, this is the new rock and roll chair. I love it. Really nice. I don't know if you guys actually can see it very well. I will be doing a, a review on this because it definitely deserves it. You're probably thinking, well, it's just another gaming chair. Gaming chairs are all the same. They're just basically car seats made into chairs. But no, this is actually different. And after having two next to each other, the other one, the GT Racing, blue, whatever it was, against this one, the Ace, this is actually a big step up. So if you are thinking about getting a chair, wait for the review. I'm actually tempted to buy another one of these because they are so comfortable. So, so I can have it on the other side of the table as well if I want to do another stuff. It's very, very nice. So actually, big thanks to uh, GT Racing for sending it to us for review. Do appreciate it. They haven't paid me to do the review. They just sent it free of charge and said, look, check it out, see what you think of it. If you like it, please uh, tell your viewers. If you don't like it, tell us what you don't like about it and we'll try and update it in our future models, which I thought was so cool. Not very often that a manufacturer will reach out to a pretty much a fledgling YouTuber like us and ask our opinion. Why would they? But apparently they do value people's opinions. So for that, certainly a thumbs up. So yeah, if you are looking for a gaming chair, totally recommend them. Good prices, good quality. This one actually is amazing quality. I'm very, very pleased with this one. And it isn't actually much more expensive than the other ones. So yeah, definitely one to look out for. Uh, Click Tech Kev says pens. You don't need pens. Pens. 
Actually, for those of you that haven't already got a Mike's Unboxing Dual Action Stylus Pen as the video intro, please do help out the channel. Consider maybe um, joining us on our Patreon site. Five pounds or five dollars a month, you get a free pen. It's a good, good, it's a goodwill gesture to those of you that help support the channel, and we send you a pen. If you're especially nice to us and you've got a partner and you really want to give the partner a pen as well, whatever you would. But uh, if you want to, let us know, stick it in the Patreon and uh, we'll send you out two for the price of one. Can't say fairer than that. Because we love you guys. And also, I've got a load of them, so I need to get rid of them. <laughs> and it's Christmas coming up soon, so what better to give the uh, your other half this year the gift that really shows that you care by giving them a Mike's Unboxing Dual Action Stylus Pen. You're definitely going to get some serious sexy, sexy time if you get one of those in your Christmas stocking, that's for sure. <laughs> oh dear uh, Ugly Bob says uh, you got a link to the chair in the stuff below yeah, oh Kath's doing it now uh, someone said about Carling Black Label where the heck is the Carling actually that is one thing this chair actually reminds me of the Carling Black Label because you got the um, the gold writing you got the black you got the white and you got the, like, the red stripe in. The stitching is actually red coloured in there. Carling Black Label. Kind of. <laughs> Patrick Libel says, hello, and I've finally been able to catch you live. Have a nice evening. Patrick, thanks for joining us. And feel free to stick around. Say hello to people in the chat. Have a chat. If I go off topic and get really boring or start talking a little nonsense, feel free to have a chat amongst yourselves in the chat. That's what it's there for. Waldo135 says, you know that the GTX 1660 increased in price, sadly? That is something which is happening on a ridiculously, uh, well, it's a real-time basis at the moment. I don't know whether anyone's noticed it. I noticed it today, actually, whilst I was recording a video, which is coming out later on this week. Whilst recording, from me going from there to here and hitting record, within the space of about 10 minutes, the price had changed on something that I was uh, discussing in the video which I don't think I've ever really come across that before. Sometimes like the next day or something like that, but kind of real-time price changes on Amazon and other places is pretty scary. Uh, Mark Ofsky says, which board did you choose? Is that to me? Or was that someone else having a chat? Oh dear, not safe for work, kids. Close your ears. Aletta says, me and the girlfriend exercise every night, lol. Who said that? A letter. <laughs> I can't believe you even asked who said that. Come on, well, who, who's Noob, likely to say that? Noob said that if Erin had a pen... Oh, sorry, I haven't got that far down the chat. He had a sexy time with Erin. Oh, see, yeah, there you go. British Noob says, Cam confirm, gave my girlfriend Erin a pen and we did the sexy time because of the pen. Power to the pen. Where's my pen? Yes, it's not the broken one. I have actually got one that broke. <laughs> this is quite sad. Oh no, hang on, it's working now. What's going on? I think it's work. Oh, yeah, sorry, I gave it to somebody at work. <laughs> what a kind person I am here. Have a broken pen. It's got my logo all over it. It basically sums up everything about me. A little bit broken. Especially after the price increases of the Ryzen processors and also graphics cards right now. Incredible. Uh, Arrow says, damn, his chair costs more than my system. Does it? Wow. Um, Ivory Wolfman says, how much is the chair? Was looking at 499. No, it's not 499. I don't think it's anywhere near 499. I think it's closer to 200, if that. What did it say, Kath? I'm sure it was. I did, I did look on it ages ago. I'm sure it was only about 200, if that, maybe a little bit less with a discount. I could have swore it came down to about 180, if I remember rightly. Calf's having a look now. GT Racing, it's the Ace M1, I think. Let's have a slurp of tea. A bit thirsty after all that exercise biking. Mm -hmm. And actually, on the exercise bike, it really does get your heart rate up. My normal resting heart rate from... Um, Apple, because obviously they care about my health, is rest, yeah, resting heart rate 
generally in and around about the 60 beats per minute, which is pretty much average, I suppose. I'm not an athlete or athletic, so if you are an athlete, generally yours will be somewhere between 40 and 60. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know if it's the S1. It might be. Yeah, it's that one there. The one on your right. That one. Yeah, I think so. But. I know, that's the black one then, so yeah, it must be the one next to it. Yeah, so about 199 with a bit of a discount on their site as well. Uh, anyway, yeah, heart rate at the moment is still actually coming down from, I got up to about 145 when I was on the exercise bike earlier, and I did think I was going to have a Sean Connery. It was not good. Uh, now, oh, so it's measuring now. So I think it's coming down to the kind of 90s or so. Let's see. So one thing I don't like about Apple Watches, they don't have a constant heart rate monitor. It, it kind of has to kick in. Whereas I'm sure with the Fitbit, it used to just work all the time. Anyway, yeah, 102 beats per minute at the moment, which is rubbish if you're into drum and bass. Super chat. Oh, camera's a bit funny then. So we've got a super chat coming from, is there another light on? Yeah, that one. A super chat is coming from, who's it coming from? Calf, help me out. Glenn. Glenn, God bless you, Mary Poppins. Glenn from our Discord and long time member of our Mugs Unboxing community has sent us a super chat, £3.14. Pence. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Doesn't have a question. He's just given money. Works for me. <laughs> thanks for your support, mate. And thanks for everything you do in the Discord as well. And that goes for all of you that are coming over from our Discord chat group, whatever community you want to call it. <coughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't say it enough, but I do genuinely mean it. Thank you all so much for doing everything that you do. Um, special mentions out to obviously Angry Doge, Ghost Adder, uh, C McKnight, Noob, Akia Shadow, Akia Shadow uh, that's Dave Burns for those who don't know, Dave Aitken, um, Glenn, Mark. Mark, MCE. Oh God, I'm, mess I'm missing out some names here. I am Billy, there. Billy K, Rob. Uh, Rob, Ugly Bob. Yeah, there's uh, so many now. Welsh Tony, um, Waldo135, ClickTech Kev. God, I could I forget Kev. He was pretty much with us from the beginning. So, um, yeah, if I've missed anyone's name out, I do apologise. It is... Uh, Did you say Ghost Adder? Ghost I said, I'm sure, yeah. You get a general idea anyway. Um, Ugly Bob says 199, nice. Yeah, actually, for the best part of 200 quid, I'm sure there's a discount code you can apply to that as well. So I'll look into that later. The discount code is Mike's Unboxing. I think you can put in MUB as well. No, that's only on. And that's it. But yeah, you can't. it's definitely worthwhile getting. I actually, because I hadn't sat in the other one for a little while, and then I got into this one, I sat in this and I was like, ooh, that's quite nice. And then Kath said, oh, can you have a look at something on my computer? No, actually, no, I'll tell you. She's, she was sat here to try and get the camera angle right, so I had to go around there. And what I did, I thought, I'll try that chair. And I sat in it, and it's actually, it wasn't as comfortable as this one, so. Happy days. And that's all right, because Kath's got a big fat ass, so she didn't need that extra padding on the chair anyway. <laughs> She's right. She's concentrating. It's all good. I'm in the clear. Sky Stalker, of course. Sky Stalker. Oh, my God, I can't believe. How could I forget Sky? <laughs> that's always the way. It's like... The people that are kind of up front in, in the fourth, you, yeah, you forget. I do apologise. Wow. Mike Games. Hmm? Mike Gaming as well. He's in there. Gen X UT. Um, yeah, there's loads. Dave Burns says that IKEA Shadow is supposed to be a secret identity. That's right. No one else say. <laughs> Uh, Gary says, I keep on waiting for a teacup to hit you. Wouldn't be a teacup. Teacups are a valuable commodity in this house, especially. We've got about four or five of these now, is it? Four. We used to have six, and they're gradually diminishing. I took one to work because they won't buy one because they're bastards. It's great because you can get so much tea in there, so it saves you having to make it multiple cups of tea. I was lucky because I could give you that BBC Studios one. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Ugly Bob says, poor Peter. Oh my God, yeah, I know. I feel terrible now. Unbelievable. 
Uh... Ah, yes, before I forget, tomorrow evening, if you want to join us for some uh, slightly more adult orientated fun and games, if you go over to Akia Shadow's Twitch streaming channel, is that what you call it? Switch, or just go to it, just search Akia Shadow. That's A C H E A, I think, Shadow. Put the link in, Dave. Dave put a link in. He's a bloody thing on here, isn't he? Moderator thing. Thing. Whatever. Thing. He'll, stick, so he'll stick a link in there for it. So if you want to join us for some slightly more adults orientated fun and games, uh, approximately eight o'clock tomorrow. Dave's always late, just like I am. So if you want to join us, um, you. You've been late. you play some Quiplash, some of the new, uh, some of the new games from what's the thing called? Uh, Jackbox TV. Ricardo says, Mike, what do you think about the iPhone 12 and its Barbie sold separately accessories? Actually, yeah, I um, yeah, I'm a little bit pissed off, which I think most people are. Apple have done what Apple do best. They basically sugarcoat stuff. They roll a turd, cover it in glitter, and everyone's, oh, Apple, they're bloody marvellous. Now, don't get me wrong, I've got Apple Watch, I've got Apple Phone, so I am in the Apple ecosystem, whether I like it or not. Um, unfortunately, Android for me isn't as secure as I would like for my day-to-day -day kind of use for business use, PayPal, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, Android can do it and will do it, but 100% Apple is a lot more secure in terms of applications and security breaches than Android ever will be. If you don't like it, I'm sorry, it's just in case. You only got to read the tech news. Every single day in the tech news, there's another Android application which has got some kind of backdoor or is a mining thing or whatever. So it's don't don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying what is happening, okay? I love Android. I've got Android phone now. I'd much rather use it. If I had the choice, I would definitely use it, but I feel that I don't have the choice because I value my security and also my bank account, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's out there. So the iPhone 12 not coming with a charger or headphones is basically bullshit. Is it? It is. Yes, some people will be in the Apple ecosystem already and will have existing earphones or a charger, but the large majority of people will take their old device, take off their phone cover, screen protector, put it back in the box that they got it with, and they'll send it off to like Music Magpie or eBay they'll sell it off to try and retain some of that value. Possibly they'll give it to a relative or partner, friend, work colleague, whatever the case may be. So then if you turn around to your work colleague and say, well, there's the phone, um, you can have it for 300 quid or 400 quid or whatever the case may be, but it doesn't have a charger. You're, you'd be like, I'm paying 300, 400 quid. Where's my damn charger? Where's my earphones? Come on, I want, I want my charging stuff which is understandable. And if you bought something new from a shop, you'd expect for it to actually be able to be used. So you're in an emergency, you go out, you go to the Apple store, you buy your iPhone, quick, I need to use it. You get into the car, put your SIM card in, oh, you don't fire up because it ain't gonna charge. And you think, oh great, I'll charge it up. Oh, no, I do not appear to see a charging plug, a USB cable, what do I do? You're screwed. So what are people gonna do? They're gonna go into the Apple store. The first thing they're gonna do, they buy the phone. Yeah, they go to Pangland, buy a charger, buy a charger which in, in generally is, if you go to Pangland, most of the charging cables and the chargers are shit. They last for about a couple of weeks or basically until the end of the warranty for returning it. And then they either explode, catch fire, whatever, stop working, which is bad. So then you buy another one. The original one's gone in the landfill. So Apple trying to say, oh, we're green, we're going to be carbon neutral by 2020, whatever. You're not, because basically you're offsetting your carbon monoxide or your waste products. Dioxide, yeah, whatever the waste stuff is, I don't care. I really don't care. I'm so angry about it. <laughs> I'm just pissed off because they are. They're literally just offsetting. It's like, well, it's compartmentalizing your waste. So you're saying, right, okay, so we're not making these extra plastic items and we're not adding to landfill because of all these extra chargers. No, you're just letting some other company take the rap for it when they're trying to make a living and you're already Billion. jerking off customers for hundreds of pounds. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. 
And I think I've got a spider going up my leg. Go away. That's the uh, Fred the spider. He's come out of the corner. He's gone up my damn leg hole. Unbelievable. Uh, it, it would always happen li live, wouldn't it? So yeah, I'm uh, a... Uh, no, that's just chest hair. So yeah, I'm I'm pissed off. Why in this day and age would you ever buy a, an electrical product that doesn't come with a means of charging it or powering it? it? Just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Apple will save, what? Maximum three or four dollars. Yet yeah, they get to uh, boast their green credentials. It's just... Oh. BBC do exactly the same thing. They say, oh yeah, we're doing all this, we're recycling all this stuff. Yes, that department of the BBC is. This department of the BBC is spunking cash and chucking stuff in the bin like it's going out of fashion. It's just compartmentalization to make the figures look good and it's absolute bullshit. See what the heart rate's like now. It was at 100. <laughs> Let's see if it's gone up or gone down. Talking of recycling and all that bullshit, really, 102. Still not great. <laughs> ah, dear. Right, do questions. right, let's do some questions. So, Ivory Wolfman says the Samsung charger cost me forty-five pounds. Forty-five actual pounds. That is pretty insane. Uh, Mark says, "What do you think about the Creative Outlier Air Sports?" Um, not seen those, so I don't know. Not too sure. Uh, so, Dave Burns says some PCs don't have a kettle lead lol. Kettle lead is kind of, yeah, that is always always uh, a bit of a pain. Alessa says, forget Apple, I won't buy anything from a company that won't let you fix your own products. Yeah, I'm not too sure how that works. I know with Apple, in a, well, depending where you live, you do have the right to repair, which is a, a legal thing now. I think in Australia, most of the US, and I think to some extent most of most of the areas in Europe now. So yeah, I'm not too sure how that works. I know it's difficult to get parts from Apple. You have to go through an authorized reseller, but in terms of uh, opening a device, it does get murky actually, because if you can't get parts from Apple directly, and you buy a third party item from like eBay or Craigslist or whatever the case may be, if you then install it into your phone and your phone subsequently at a later date on an unrelated thing altogether fails for some reason and you've got a non-genuine Apple part in there, in theory they should be able to say, well sorry you've used a, a non-Apple authorized part so we're not going to honor the warranty. So that's where it gets a little bit murky, so really they should allow people to do the repairs and also to buy parts from Apple, which I think they're basically just, yeah, stonewalling people so they don't repair their stuff and encouraging people to waste stuff. So if you get a broken iPhone 7, do you go out and buy a new motherboard for it or a new screen or whatever? For what it costs, you might as well go and buy a new phone and add it to the landfill. Like Arrow says, 2020 is weird. This has been one weird ass year. It really has. Very, very strange. You sent us asking, when does the build start in October? Uh, when, when does the, the build, there isn't a build in this video. This is, uh, we're just going through parts to make up the build. I'm not doing an actual live build for a couple of reasons. One, I don't have the parts here on hand. Well, I do have some of them. I'm still waiting for some of the bits to come in. I am actually going to probably do this build. So we'll go through the parts. <coughs> it's actually a good point at this time now. Like I'm not an expert as such. I've got experience and I keep an eye on the market so I know what's about. But I'm not an expert and I don't know everything and I'll quite happily admit that. So going through the parts now is like a, a cathartic thing. I'm just working through it. So if you guys spot anything actually in this build, which you think is kind of either wrong or could be improved or whatever the case may be. That is what this live stream is for. So we can go through the parts, discuss the options. Um, I can take influence from you guys to see what you want to see built. And most of the bits like I said, I've got already. Motherboard wise, processor wise, I think I'm pretty good. RAM, I'm good. Some things like the graphics card, the case, I'm still a little bit undecided. I have actually recorded a video based around this back today, 
which will be releasing later on in the week. So for those of you that don't have the time to stick around for the stream or don't want to, don't want to listen to the kind of me going off on different tangents all the time, if you just want the actual kind of uh, the PC part picker guide, then that is coming out as a separate entity. I figured there's lots of different people out there and they want to see content in different ways. So I've done a, a really condensed version. This is kind of like the long-winded talk through of it. And then also hopefully in the next few days or towards the end of the week, maybe even next Saturday stream, then we'll do the actual build and put it all together and then see how it all turns out after all of our discussions and uh, hopefully we have some input from you guys as well, which would be awesome. Uh, so I think, I think that is pretty much it for the questions. So yeah, I think I, if you haven't seen already, or if you want to follow along with this, the link to the PC part picker build that we're doing is both in the video description and it is also in the chat. I think Kath put it towards the top of the chat. So if you want to check out from there, if not, um, hopefully one of the moderators or Kath will put the link in now into the chat so you can open it up in another tab just so you can follow along and see what you think of it. And again, see what options. Actually, uh, a good thing that came up today was Seam at Night on our Discord, who's one of our uh, expert level contributors, suggested maybe swapping out for an Intel setup. And in the video when I was recording it, I was kind of like, well, yeah, there's the 1030, which is possible. But then I thought after, there is actually a 10100 processor from Intel, which might actually fit the bill a little bit better. So maybe if you guys would be interested in seeing an Intel build, I know there's a few of you that really do want to see an Intel build, but alternatively, I do know that there's a load, load more people that are kind of on the more budget end of the market and are looking at AMD. So again, we'll take some influence from you guys, see what you think, um, see what you're interested in. You never know, I might even do both just to compare them. But uh, yeah, a quick question here from Waldo135. Which is better, Mike? Ryzen 3 3300X or i7 6700? In theory, at the moment, it's the i7 because you can't get a 3300. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat what you said? No. Okay. You done? Yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, right. You can go on the naughty step. Yes. So come back to what Waldo One Three Five said. Essentially, at the moment, when you're asking what is better, it's a very, very open-ended question. Because when you ask if anything is better, you can always find someone will counteract your comment with some other thing. So if you say, well, the AMD is cheaper, you say, well, I can get a second-hand Intel for less. If you say um, in Counter-Strike Go, the Intel chip is faster. Someone will turn around and say, well, in XYZ game, the AMD is faster. So there's always going to be someone who will counteract your comments. It's generally go by what is actually available, uh, what works for you, and basically do some Googling. Essentially, that is what it comes down to. A lot of us are the same. We Nobody knows really all the answers. All we do is we go around, we sp like soak up all the information like sponges. You go around all the usual suspects like uh, Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unboxed, uh, maybe Linus Tech Tips, and a few others. And you can generally get a feeling for what parts are like. And if you're not sure what they compare like, there's various comparison sites you can use which are a little bit hit and miss. But again, it's about getting information, getting a load of information together, and then weighing up all that those individual bits of information and working out in your mind which is better. And maybe even going from personal experience, especially things like our Discord and other people's Discords, where there's a lot of people together of a similar mind and they've possibly used the same parts, you can ask the people questions and say, well, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this, what do you think is better? And then you can just use all that information and make your own mind up. There isn't really a definitive answer that will say 100% the 3300X is better than the uh, i7-6700K because each thing has its pros and cons and its merits. Yes, Gaff? Glenn's put 3D Mark comparison site. Um, yeah, 3D Mark comparison site is a, is a good shout as well. Yeah, it comes down to many things, memory timings. Um, yeah, there's many things. So performance-wise, again, it's impossible to say because 
in different applications, things will work differently. The Intel will work much better in productivity tasks, just because the way the architecture worked at that time, and a lot of things like that, like Adobe Premiere, do favor Intel processors. In certain games, again, they will favor Intel. Some games are built for Intel processors. Some games are built for AMD processors. So it's, uh, it's a very difficult thing to say. Angry Dude just said, Counter Strike Go? Hey, I'm old, okay? I forget things. And I've been starting, actually, Doge, I was playing Counter Strike before you were even born. So please forgive my misdemeanor. <laughs> Uh, Orn2 says, at Mike, uh, with that CPU, uh, is have used a, uh, I should have used a B450M, save some money for a better SSD. Now that's the sort of things I'm looking for. That's the sort of comments I'm looking for. I won't take them as criticism, even though some of them may be. It's going to be uh, one of those things. They're always with a build. You can look at any build and ask five people the same question and you'll get seven or eight different answers because builds are very much down to what is available, what it costs, and does it work? Most things do generally work together, but anyway. Uh, let's have a look, see, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the parts now. Let's, I'll get the, uh, the list up and I'll share my screen so you can see my lovely, beautiful, shiny head. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, I won't be able to see the chat at the time, so um, I do apologize for that. And where are we? Here we are. Is that the thing? Did I actually do that? Why do cable extensions cost so much money? Um, I don't know, actually. Cable extensions cost a lot of money because people are into... The people that are into aesthetics or the look of a system, it's like anything. If you like the... If you like... 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 If you like, if you like the way things look... Generally, the rule of thumb is in marketing and sales in general, if something looks nice, you will pay more for it. That is always the case. So cable extensions, because they look nice and they're aimed at people to make things look nice and crisp, they know that people will pay a premium for it. So most cable extensions, I would say, probably cost to make in the region maybe three to five pounds at best. So they would charge probably in the region between 20, 25, maybe 30 pounds for them, depending on the complexity and the color and all that kind of stuff. But they know that people will pay it because there's a market for it. So you do pay a premium for it. Much like with um, black colored cables on a power supply, you'd always pay more for a black cable version than you will for ketchup and mustard. <laughs> ketchup and mustard. And uh, we've got another super chat come in from somebody. I can't see now because I've uh, closed the chat thing. Ricardo. Ricardo. Thank you, Ricardo. God bless you, Mary Poppins. Oh, it's better. With 10 million, million, million... Coop. Coop. <laughs> uh, it says, sorry, Mike, this time only two pounds and a penny. Thanks for the Apple answer. It seems that the future, That's like video games, uh, base plus a lot of DLCs. Yeah, it does seem it does seem that way actually. <laughs> yeah, British Noob says I love Ricardo's donations. They always seem like a lot of money until he says how much it is in pounds. I don't care because I just see all those zeros and it looks pretty bloody cool. So thank you, Ricardo. It's the only time we see zero. Actually, if anyone lives in a country where their kind of uh, currency is like really well has basically loads and loads of zeros, please send me a super chat for like a penny or a pound or something just so I can see all those little things. <laughs> Ugly Bob says, I love lamp. And there, bang on cue. That was good timing. The lamp loves you, Ugly Bob. The lamp does love you, Bob. It's like the green lantern, but RGB. And Calf's backside is already reaping the rewards of all this action, so thank you all so much. <laughs> oh dear, bless you. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's get into this PC part picker shenanigans. And uh, there we go. So hopefully you've got the links now so you can see it. And if I can remember which button I press, it is number three, I believe. I always get nervous about this. Windows desktop. 
Is that working, Calf? What's that? I can't tell. That's live-ish. <laughs> Have I done it wrong? Oh yeah, I've got the wrong Windows desktop. It's because I didn't plug in the thing. Okay, let's, uh, let's move. Lucky you don't have tech channel. Yeah, if I had a tech channel, this would be really embarrassing right now. Is that better? <laughs> it's a bit delayed on that. I know what it was. It's because I set this all up and then I plugged in the uh, the screen after. No, I don't think it's working. Is that working yet? Oh my God, what is going on in my life right now? <sighs> Nobody's noticed, do they? Nobody's noticed. They're all chatting amongst themselves, which is fine. Um, is that going to make that bigger? Oh, I've ruined my life now. Once more. Right, bear with me. Well, that's on Windows Desktop, so how can that possibly not be working? Let's try that one. Hey, that's what it was. I'll tell you something, actually. I've got to get rid of this light, which is hanging down from above me, because all I can see at the corner of my eye is, like, this line of cable, and it's actually starting to make me have, like, a little bit of a power... Plegic fit or something, I don't know what it is. Well, you can say a semi. Yeah. It's, not, it's not giving a semi in any way, shape or form. Right, okay then. So, hopefully everything is working out and you can all hear me. And I've not got 13 different mics turned on at the same time. How are we looking, Kath? Is the chat all happy? Are we happy? Are we good? Yeah. Okay then. So, this is the PC Part Picker list. If you've not used PC Part Picker before, if you're new here or you're new to PCs and all that kind of stuff and you're looking to build a PC, PC Part Picker is the de facto place to go. It's really cool, really handy and works very well. It can be used in multiple countries. So, we're in the United Kingdom. We are in the United Kingdom. <laughs> I haven't even had a drink yet. But you can use this in multiple countries around the world, Argentina, Australia, Bahrain, Be Belgium, Brazil, no, you get the idea. There's lots of places, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Portugal, you know. yeah, anyway, don't read yeah. I'm not going to read them all. Anyway, so what they'll do, it will scour sites all around the, uh, the interwebs and give you potentially the best prices on your components. Now, by a lucky stroke on this particular build, pretty much everything is from Amazon.co.uk, apart from a graphics card, which the graphics card, weirdly, was on Amazon uh, up until about three or four minutes before I actually started doing the video. So when you actually watch the video, when I'm talking about this later in the, the weekly release, you'll notice that the actual list changes, but that's because basically I'm a moron and it, I didn't do it quick enough, so it does change. So the, like I said, these prices do change quite quickly. So you might see a price now, go to buy it tomorrow, and it'd be slightly different. It does happen. It's unfortunate, but if you want to buy it, buy it live. Do it now. Do it now! Anyway, moving on. So, AMD Ryzen 3 3100, 3.6 GHz quad-core processor. Now, the reason behind this is, well, basically because it's cool AF. Gets five stars, which is, uh, well, 4.8, which is close enough for me. Comes with a cooler, so you don't have to worry about a cooler. It's a pretty decent price. At the moment, Amazon do seem to be pretty much the best box here in the UK. are trying to keep up with Amazon, but um, they do free shipping and handling. But generally, it takes a couple of days, whereas Prime, generally, you'll get it the next day or sometimes even the same day if you're very, very lucky. You can get it from other places, obviously, eBuyer, Scan, etc., etc. But at the moment, it does seem that Amazon.co.uk are the best option. Also... You've got to be careful with Amazon prices, they're often wrong. Yes, that is a very, very good point. Some of the Amazon prices, when you go from PC Park Picker, they do change. So do, um, don't take it as gospel, just use these as a guide price. If you click on the link and then it goes and opens up. Actually, let's uh, open that in a new tab. Actually, that's possibly a bad idea because that will be me logged in and you'll see my address, so we won't be doing that. <clears throat> Anyway, so check the prices, is what I'm saying. Open up, make sure that the price that you see here that you like is the price on Amazon. Also, actually, when you go to amazon.co.uk or even amazon.com, do also check in the new and used as well, because you might find that there's a Amazon warehouse bargain. Now, Prime Day, they did have 20% off across the board on most items, so 20% off of a processor at this point, 100 pounds, give or take, you're looking at almost 20 pounds off, so that does bring it down quite a bit. So at that price, it gives you an extra 20 pounds towards something else. 
better motherboard, um, another case, maybe the next tier up in hard drive space, whatever the case may be, no pun intended. Stuart Clear has just done a emoji thing for 10 euros. Stuart, thank you very much for your super chat. I cannot see it because I'm in the uh, in this desktop mode, but thank you so much for your donation. We do appreciate it. I'll take a look at it when I go back to the uh, the chat in the uh, in a moment. But anyway, so Ryzen 3 3100. Now, probably some of you out there are going, well, why not a 3300X? Now, I did cover that a little bit earlier. The 3300X is basically like a unicorn processor. It is uh, rocking horse shit, tartan paint, skyhook, all those kinds of things. It is a mythical beast. It does not exist. I know one person who's got one, and that's Skystalker. And he's in Canada, so he could be lying. I don't know. Possibly. But I doubt it, because he's a good guy. And I forgot to mention him earlier, so I do apologize for that. But anyway, the 3300X is always listed, but generally not available. Most of the sites okay. you go to, it won't come around. Oh, yeah, I could do that, can I? Open it on incognito good point that's not me that's loads of people telling me that so anyway the ryzen 3 3100 um actually can i do that yes yes can i do that in there new incognito window okay um hello sign in ah that's there we go well done thanks chat you guys are the best So currently, yeah, that price tallies. Uh, yeah, let's have some cookies. Do I look like I need any more cookies? So Ryzen 3 3100 processor, four cores, eight threads, 18 megabytes cache, and a 3.9 gigahertz max boost with uh, XFR, or whatever they call it these days, precision boost. Generally, these will go higher. Even on my lowly, humble A520 motherboard, managed to get this up to, well, considerably higher than 3.9, on all cores without boosting. So yeah, these processors have got a lot of headroom. If you do go for the Ryzen 3 3300X, essentially you can really get the same performance out of these, which I think was why AMD haven't really bothered getting the 3300X out because really clock for clock, when you overclock the, the Ryzen 3 3100, is yeah, it's a pointless exercise. The next jump up really is the Ryzen 3 3600. Okay, so let's minimize that. So back to here. So that is my choice of processor. A, because it's available. B, gives a good price. And C, because it overclocks pretty darn well. And it comes with a cooler. So. And it's also £90.94 from CCL on eBay. Oh, that's good. Is that including postage? I'm not sure. Okay, someone just said in the chat that it's available on eBay as well, a little bit cheaper. So £90.94. p Possibly plus, possibly plus postage wow that was difficult for me to say so worth checking out motherboard wise this is one which really really did stick in my throat a little bit if i'm completely honest with you this is um yeah this is a, a an odd one at the moment for 100 pounds this does seem like a pretty decent deal now i could have gone for a much cheaper board so let's have a look at this one this Somebody is said, what about a b450 tomahawk or a five something so this is the ASRock B550M Pro 4 Micro ATX. Now we've gone for Micro ATX because we're going for a Micro ATX case. Realistically, SLI for all intents and purposes and Crossfire and all that kind of stuff is dead and buried. There's no need for it. It's, uh, it's a pointless exercise. So with that in mind, Micro ATX works very well and also you get cheaper boards, cheaper cases generally. So 99.99 at amazon.co.uk um, and they've got stock. They are considerably dear elsewhere. The Pro 4 boards are generally pretty decent. They look good. They've got that massive heat shield over the VRMs there. And the VRM setup is pretty decent. I believe it's a, I think I remember rightly, it's a six plus two setup. It could be a seven plus two. I, I've been seeing so many boards recently, it's very difficult to tell. But it's a decent looking board. You've got the M.2 heat sink. You've got a nice bit of logo on the ASRock there. You've got your SATA ports on the angle, which I like. Also, you've got four memory sockets or four memory channels. Uh, it is only a dual channel support, but there are four channels. They do share channels, which is why in some boards, if you populate all four sticks, you get lower memory frequencies because it's splitting two channels into four, back into two for the processor. 
It's pretty complicated stuff. Generally, most people only ever use two, but for some reason, motherboards with four sticks do seem to uh, command more value. I've never actually really fully understood that. Very rarely do people upgrade or add extra sticks these days. Generally, they tend to take out the existing ones and replace them with another two. So maybe the, the era of having a two slot board is almost upon us. Who knows? Anyway, so you've got pretty decent I.O. You've got plenty of USB ports on the back. So you've got USB 3.2, all that kind of usual stuff. And if you wanted to use a, a APU for some reason, you've got some outputs on the back. Uh, APUs are a bit of a weird one with this. Some APUs work, some don't. There's mixed reports. Officially, none are supported as of yet, but uh, some people have had good good uh, luck with the 3000G and the 2200G and also the 3200G. So potentially they will work if you want to go that route, but I personally wouldn't. Um, Irish Rally said MSI X470 is £85 will get you files for Gen 3 in January. There is, yeah, that is, um, the X470 boards are actually very good. My only thing is with X470 and B450 at the moment is because AMD are releasing BIOSes late, i.e. January, and they are going to be beta BIOSes. Let's not forget that. They are beta BIOSes, which anything which is beta is basically use at your own risk. So... Hopefully, when it comes to uh, mid-January, February next year, I'm hoping that our Discord isn't going to be absolutely littered with people who have got B450 boards, B uh, X470 boards, and A320 boards who have installed a beta BIOS to enable Ryzen 5000 series support, only to find they're getting system instability, memory errors, um, all those kinds of things. Cheers, Glam. Thank you. See you later. Um, yeah, that is my concern. A lot of people are saying the same thing. Oh, yeah, B450 is going to be fine. It's going to work great with uh, Ryzen 5000. I've been around in this industry for a long time, and I've seen a lot of um, chipset changes, and I've seen a lot of companies. And generally, when they say it's a beta BIOS, and they go actually out of their way to say that it will be a beta BIOS, that is their kind of get out clause to say, this probably won't work brilliantly. Because if it is a beta, it means it hasn't pe passed much testing, if any. It's managed to get past the alpha stage of testing, which is a good thing, but it's still in beta. So it's not a full release. And anyone who's installed a beta BIOS on a graphics card before now, or basically anything, if you've ever installed a beta BIOS on anything, it's generally, you are a guinea pig. You are the testing method for them to work out if it's really, really good or really, really bad. And it's not until they get enough feedback from a lot of people to say, yeah, overall, this is really bad, that they will be inclined to do anything else about it. So for me personally, I would be uh, dead against going with a B450 or an X470 board. I'm not saying that if you've got those boards ready, <coughs> that they're no good and they're gonna be trash. All I'm saying is, as with most things, the A320 and the, uh, the B350, the, those boards and X, X370 boards were designed for a certain processor in mind. Chris L said, anyone who's played a beta game will know how shit some of them can be. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, if, if, you, if you play beta games, then, well, I think most of us play beta games these days, the way they crash so badly. But that's one, most of the things, they're designed for a region for a reason. So B450 and the X470, they were designed for the second generation or the, the Zen Plus parts. Zen 2 parts, the AMD 3000, the new motherboards again, because those boards were designed for those processors. They will work with the other processors, but you're not always guaranteed that it's gonna be absolutely seamless. So for the sake of stability and for the sake of being able to actually move forward and still get some really decent product support, I would definitely urge people to go with a new modern motherboard if you're building. And also you get the extra features. So you get better USB, you get better PCI Express. Generally, you'll get better RGB support, um, especially if you're looking at MSI boards. MSI boards on the 400 series, the uh, RGB was an absolute sack of crap. 
that's if you're into RGB. If you're not into RGB at all, then ignore everything I've just said because it makes no difference whatsoever. Richard says, well, he, he agrees. Um, he thinks only they're only going to label as beta to deter people accidentally updating a board with the wrong chip in it. Um, I don't know, Richard. Um, that is a that is a that is a, a genuine, valid thing, I suppose. I don't think they would label it as beta to prevent people doing it on the wrong chips. I think there's going to be enough disclaimers on the actual BOSS updates themselves to say whether or not they are suitable or the risks involved. And actually, I'll be the first one to stand up and say I'm wrong if the, if this turns out to be completely different. But I would pretty much guarantee that when these bosses, the beta bosses come out, I am pretty sure it's going to say this is a one-time deal. This is not undoable. This will only work with certain processors. And I'm, I would almost guarantee that it's going to say that your results may vary and there will be a warning saying this is a beta BIOS. You have been warned. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. I'd love to be proved wrong because I think it would be really nice to have decent BIOSes which have been proved and tested. But um, I can't see it happening. The industry is moving too quick. Too many products to support. Something's got to give. And from motherboard manufacturers, they're already looking at making new B450 boards. Why would they make new B450 boards if the existing ones were okay? There's no reason for it. So why would they do it? I think they know exactly what the case is, that a lot of boards are going to get bricked and they're not going to support the processors properly. That is why ASUS for sure, MSI for sure, are releasing new updated versions of the B450 boards with better VRM, which is going to be one of the big problems, I think, with the 5000 series processors and the power delivery. Aletta says she saw some benchmarks today and the 12 core Ryzen 5900X is faster than the 16 core Ryzen 3950X in most applications. Cool. That is pretty neat, pretty nice to see. It'd be good to see some actual proper uh, releases and these new processors to see what the actual deal is. It's a real shame that AM4 has come into an end because that puts another kind of angle on things. But anyway, that is my choice of the motherboard and my reasoning behind it. I would say to anybody, if you're looking at building a PC now or looking to build one in the next few months, even though the B450 boards do look attractive and tempting at their lower prices, if you're looking for an older processor to go with it, fine if you're looking for like a 2700x uh ryzen 5 2600 maybe fine go for it if it maybe a 3200g those kinds of processors yes definitely go for it they work absolutely brilliantly with it and they're fully supported same goes for ryzen 3 uh sorry ryzen 5 3600 if you're looking at one putting one of those on a b450 tomahawk board absolutely fine you're not gonna have any issues with it but the B450, the sort of B550 boards now have come down in price significantly. And even the lower end boards, such as like the Pro 4s, the VRMs are of a much higher quality than their B450 counterparts. So that is worth bearing in mind. The, the VRM is going to be the big issue with these new 5000 processors as well, as it has been with the 3000 processors. So move with the times. That's all I'm saying. If you've got a B450 already, cool it's great but if you're building a new system i personally wouldn't unless it is ridiculously cheap like half the price anyway moving on so let's go back to uh rest of our components so ram the ram again this is ridiculous 49.98 for 16 gigs of ram this is ddr4 3200 cl16 this generally the hyperx stuff will overclock a little bit so you could probably squeeze a little bit more frequency at that if you really wanted to as we know, the Ryzen 3000 series, the sweet spot is um, 3600, but realistically, unless you're doing benchmarks, you're very unlikely to see any real difference. Now we have seen recently in the prime cells, uh, the DDR4 3600 in various different types coming through, around about 60 pounds, but those cells are pretty much over now. I've not found anything which is as good value as this. Kingston RAM as well, you've got lifetime warranty as you expect with most. And it has actually got a uh, actually pretty nice looking heat spreader. So this whole system is designed to be relatively muted. It is a uh, black, white and silver kind of theme to it. So it all matches in nicely. If you wanted to add some RGB support to it later, 
you could do and make it look really, really nice. I've always liked the HyperX Fury branding. I think it's always been uh, pretty decent. And the only one really which comes close is the Corsair. The Corsair RAM for me has been very hit and miss over the years. I've had various problems with compatibility with various different motherboards and setups. So uh, Kingston generally works very well. So that is the RAM. Again, 16 gigs for 50 quid, which I think is amazing value for money. Steph 2K asks one question. Why not go for a 3300X instead of 3100? Uh, Steph, that question was answered a little bit earlier. Essentially, it comes down to there basically not being any stock of the 3300X. It is on back order pretty much everywhere, unless you're paying a massive premium for it, in which case it doesn't become a value proposition. The difference in the two between the Ryzen 3 3100 and the 3300X is negligible um, unless you're running benchmarks. If you're just playing games using the system, it's extremely unlikely you're going to notice any difference at all. So uh, yeah, that's what I would go with. Moving on for storage. Again, storage is going to be one of those things where depending where you live, there are going to be other options available, which may be better for you. And obviously feel free to swap this around, do whatever you like with it. This is just, for me, for gaming, I would say this is works out pretty decent. So Western Digital Caviar Blue, that's a one terabyte, 3.5 inch, 7200 RPM drive. That is going to be for your bulk storage. So your Steam library, you can put on there with Steam and most of the other game libraries, you can actually have it split into various places. So you could have your main Steam library on your SSD and then have an additional library with a new folder on your slower drive. And then you can just move the files across if you need to. So if you're playing one specific game, say Far Cry 5 or something, have that installed on your SSD. And then when you finished it or you're not playing it anymore, you can just move it across to your one terabyte mechanical storage and vice versa. 512, I think 256 can be done but after you've installed Windows, maybe Office, a couple of other applications, um, your OBS, whatever it is, all these different things, you do start to show that you're running out of a bit of space. So I think a 512 drive does actually make a lot of sense. It isn't massively more expensive. It's basically kind of double the price. So you can get a 256 or 240 drive for around about 30 pounds here in the UK generally. They have dropped down a little bit less than that. I went with the Silicon Power one for a couple of reasons. One, um, they've been really good to us as a channel, so I do like to promote their stuff, but also they do have really, really good warranties and the drives are very good spec. So Silicon Power drives, I think the A55 has got a three-year warranty. Most of their drives have a five-year warranty, so they, they're pretty confident in their stuff, so they do give good warranties. And again, you can get other things. There's the TC Sunbow drives, which uh, myself, Kev, and a few others on the channel have all used. and not had any issues with they've all been generally very good uh, also you've got the ascenso drives as well which are available here in the uk probably available in the us as well again decent drives to get the job done feel free to swap these out as you feel applicable waldo asked um why you didn't get an m.2 because it's getting cheap um i didn't get an m.2 for a specific reason now this is a specifically a budget or a kind of placeholder gaming system as most of us have probably seen already, Hardware Unboxed did a really great um, sort of testing thing with various different games, testing solid state drives against NVMEs of different sorts. And realistically, there's probably, well, one or two seconds difference in loading times. So realistically, the premium that you pay for a 512 NVMe is kind of pointless. If you want to make the system look nice and tidy and you do want that extra increased speeds of an NVMe, then obviously do swap it out. But for all intents and purposes, I would rather save a little bit of money here and there to have a better graphics card than I would to have maybe one or two second faster loading times. And we'll quickly stop there to say thank you for the super chat, which Patrick LaBelle. Patrick LaBelle. Just got back from grocery, have a drink on me. He says, just got back from the groceries and have a drink on me. Thank you very much. And do I appreciate that. Turn the light off. Not really. Calf did actually get up and turn the light off, even though you guys can't even see it. So, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Bless her little cotton socks. Right, a few more things. All Brian right. Aaron asked, actually looking to get into PC. Got a PC part picker list, but prices keep rising. Do you think it's a good time to take the plunge or wait till nail Christmas? 
love the bid speed. That is, that's always a good question. Will prices drop? Will prices fall? Now, normally at this time of year, we would pretty much know what is going to happen based on previous years. But now that we're in the COVID times, all bets are off. Nobody really knows. We've got the big problem is supply chain. There's not enough stuff on the market. Look at the problem. NVIDIA is the biggest graphics card manufacturer on the planet. Let's just think about that a minute. The biggest manufacturer of graphics cards, and that is pretty much their primary thing that they do. And they, with all their money, with all their financial muscle, and with all their planning, could not manage to fulfill the orders for 3080s and 3090s. So if that doesn't tell you something about the state of the supply chain right now, nothing will. Just think about that, dwell on that for a second and think about what is going on. So if you're saying traditionally this time of year now, we would see prices kind of ramping up a little bit, getting ready for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, then obviously the Christmas sales and New Year sales, where traditionally prices will drop. At the moment, this is kind of just before the peak generally, but already we're seeing those advanced sales. The prime day came a little bit early, or sorry, came a little bit later, which kind of exacerbated, that's a big word, exacerbated the problem. So the market is really out of whack at the moment. If you're looking at power supplies, uh, processors, prices seem to be out of whack. Looking at memory prices, they are pretty much where you'd expect them to be at this time of year. Same for storage, it is starting to drop, which again, we would expect to see around about now um, and also going into Black Friday, etc. So to answer the question, is now the right time? No one really has a crystal ball. My personal feeling on it is if you're an Amazon customer, you do have the right to send back an item within 30 days of receiving it for any reason you specify, generally if it's fulfilled by Amazon. So I am a, uh, a very, very prolific Amazon shopper. I buy pretty much everything from Amazon because I know that if there is a massive price change or I just think that something else is better value, you can send it back. It's not like when you go into a shop or some of the other bigger online retailers where you have to pass a pop quiz or prove that the thing's actually dead before they'll give you your money back. Amazon are not the number one shopping force in the world for no reason. They are because they've got the power to do it and also their returns policy is excellent. Obviously, I don't advise you take the piss out of it and don't just buy stuff, try it and go, oh, that's right, I'll try something else and go around on a merry-go-round because that ain't fair on Amazon and it's not fair on everybody else who uses Amazon because it just then it will affect everybody. But if you're in a genuine position where you buy something and then it becomes much, much cheaper in a very short period of time, there is actually on the Amazon returns, there is actually a tick box that says this item is available cheaper as part of their return policy. So don't feel bad about it because that is in their policy. They allow you to do that. That is the reason it is there. That is the reason why they are number one. And I know I keep on harping on about it, but it does. It, it fills me with a lot of confidence buying from Amazon. It really does. I Whenever I buy from other places in the UK, CCL, eBay, um, even stuff on Marketplace, it always makes me think twice about what I'm doing because Amazon generally have been extremely good to me as a customer. If I've ever had any problems, the returns have been very good. Free. They're free, etc., etc. So as long as you get Amazon. Yeah, as long as it's Amazon or fulfilled by Amazon, you generally can't go wrong. Third party sellers, not always the same case. So do make sure what you're doing. But is that the same if you're not Prime? Though? I'm not too sure. You might need to be a Prime customer. I'm not entirely sure. But we have been and I've been for years, so I kind of take it for granted, and I I would recommend it wholeheartedly. Braden Nielsen says, last time he put his operating system on a mechanical hard drive, his computer is extremely glitchy. Is it probably just a result of a faulty mechanical hard drive? Um, possibly is. That's probably... I would never recommend putting an operating system on a mechanical hard drive these days. Windows 10 has been optimized so heavily towards... Um, solid state storage that using on a mechanical drive actually it just it does it may not be glitchy but it just it's it seems very slow and the way that the windows is optimized the way it does the file allocations and all that kind of stuff yeah on a mechanical drive it will feel glitchy because this it is so much slower the transfer rates 
Next up is a graphics card. So the graphics card I've gone with is the MSI GeForce 1660 Super. Now in a previous build I did, based around a very similar price point, I think, I think it was about 730, 750 pounds. It was a very similar build, but we only managed last time to get a 1660 Super, sorry, a 1650 Super. And also a, uh, we got a bigger case, but, oh, shouldn't have pressed that. Um, yeah, we got a different case, but it was worked out about £100 dearer. So now, a couple of months later, we're getting a lot more for our money. The difference between a 1660 Super and a 1650 Super is actually quite a lot. And price-wise, it isn't quite a lot. 1650 Supers generally tend to retail around about 150 to the £200 mark, depending on the type of drive you get, uh, sorry, the type of... Uh, model you get, whether it's a Strix or it's got RGB, etc, etc. But generally about 150, 160 is pretty much the bottom end of most of those 1650 Supers. You only get 4 gigs of RAM on the 1650, whereas on the 1660 Super you get 6 gigs. So even though this is really kind of aimed towards 1080p and very low end 1440p gaming, because you've got 6 gigs of RAM, that extra 2 gigs of VRAM is going to give you a little bit of breathing room if you are stretching legs into 1440p. And really for 1440p, essentially I suppose you should be looking at a 2060, um, maybe a 5600 XT, that kind of thing. But I think for 200 pounds, I don't think there's anyone out there who could wholeheartedly argue and say that no, that is bad value for money. I think for 209 pounds, yes, it is the Ventus XS model, which some people, have kind of made some comments about it isn't the best model, but it certainly is the best price. The boost clocks are amongst the highest. The fans are pretty decent. I actually personally quite like the look of the card. I don't know about you guys. I I generally like this look. It's quite a, quite a cool look. Nice big fans. I would have had the Zotac as being a, uh, a runner-up choice. Unfortunately, the Zotac does seem to have slightly smaller fans, which do tend to be a little bit on the noisy side. They use the same cooling uh, setup as they do on the 1650 Super, which is the, uh, I think that's the da -da -da, the Firestorm version. And the fans are a little bit on the noisy side. The MSI ones, in my opinion, are a little bit quieter. So I would, uh, I would certainly look towards this. You can, of course, get the 1660 non-Super versions, which are about another £25 cheaper. So if you want to shave a little bit off, then you could do that. Personally, I would say it's worth spending the extra 25, 30 pounds to get the Super Edition. It is a better car, it's faster, RAM, etc, etc, etc. Anyway, yeah. It is the card I would choose, and that is why I've added it to this build. So going back, so that's our graphics card out of the way. Um, the case. The case is going to be a bone of contention. Some people are going to hate this, but I actually think it looks really good for the money. So this is the Thermaltake. S100 Micro ATX. Um, it doesn't look a lot, but for 35 quid, with a tempered glass side panel, which is hinged on here, so you've got nice hinged sides, the glass is actually kind of shaped all around this front mesh. Now, you, you haven't got a mesh across the whole front, which I would have liked to have seen, if I'm completely honest with you. It would have been nice to see a full mesh front. But for 35 quid, it is a thermal tape case. They generally get packaged really well, so if you're building it to flip in a system, <clears throat> excuse me a second. While you're there, um, Mally asked, any review of an APU only case around the corner? Um, yes, Mally, yes, probably. <laughs> um, so the case, I think this looks really nice. I'll be interested to see what your thoughts on it are. I love the way that the glass is kind of cut off and tempered into this, this section here. Let me just uh, expand that a little bit. What the hell? Stupid browser. Um, yeah, I really like the look of that. You've got the hinge sides, you've got a basement section, you've got enough room in there for a 240 or 280 rad. You can put the fans behind, so they're behind the mesh, so that's not going to obstruct airflow too much. Yeah, overall, I think this is a really nice looking case. It's got mesh on both sides, so it is going to be more restricted than a traditional fully open mesh front, 
but this is going to give you some good filtration and it's also going to reduce noise as well. So if it's an area where it's slightly more noise sensitive or maybe you just don't like RGB lights and all that stuff just blasting out the front, I think this is a really good option. The front is um, very customizable. So if you're into, I don't know, your anime, manga, whatever the case may be, just want to do some modding, this front panel is a perfect thing for getting some vinyls made up and some custom graphics on there, or maybe just spray paint the damn thing. Who knows? But um, yeah, I think it's a really good case. The top section actually, apparently from what I've read from the marketing blurb, you can actually fit a 200 mil fan in the top. So if you think in the front, you could put in two 140s, put a single 200 in the top, and that is gonna give you a lot of airflow in what is a relatively small chassis. I like it, I think it's really good. And also it, there is an option for a, uh, a white one as well. So if you want the snow version, you can get that. It's a little bit dearer, about 44 pounds I think it is at the moment here in the United Kingdom from either Amazon or from Scan I think it was. You don't get the RGB installed, obviously that they put that in there as a demonstration system. You don't get a graphics card. You do get a single fan in the back, which is just a standard thermal take 120 mil fan, PWM controlled. That is all you get, just one fan, which is why later on I've added more. What's that? Everyone's putting that of you. What is it? That hay pick. <laughs> uh, sorry, calf's distracting me. So. That is why next up we've got a couple of fans. So we've got the Arctic P12 fans. These are only six pounds each at the moment. Static pressure fans, which are gonna certainly help with the slight restriction we've got on that front panel. So a little bit of extra static pressure. You could, if you wanted to, swap these out for 140 mil fans, just to fill up that front section a little bit more. That would add a little bit to the price. So I don't think it's entirely necessary. For me, the two of these at the front works really, really well. And you're probably noticing already that there is no RGB in this at the moment. No RGB at all. That is the whole idea. It's uh, basically a monochrome-ish build. Very muted colors, so black, white, and chrome or silver, which I think is, gives it a really nice understated look. Now the power supply is where people are gonna, probably gonna start spitting feathers and freaking out. I've gone with the CIT FX Pro 600 watt. Um, Non-modular, unfortunately. It has got active power correction, and some of the main capacitors in there are the Japanese capacitors, which is, Always a good sign. Now, people always get pissed off with power supplies. Oh, you should go for EVGA, you should get a Corsair, you should get this, you should get that. Fine, if you want to, that's your money, go for it. I've recently always been buying uh, 80 plus bronze. This one's got 88% efficiency and a 140 mil fan. So it's quiet, it's got nice blacked out cables. 88% efficiency, that's 2% off of being a silver. Or is it a gold? I never can never remember that. But essentially, that's pretty darn good. You can't really go too far wrong. If you want to obviously swap out, you could put in there the uh, the Be Quiet System 9, I believe, which is about £45. Although sometimes they do come with weird uh, ketchup and mustard type uh, cabling, which I'm not a great fan of. But again, there we go. That is it. That is, uh, that is what I'd go with. So again, this is, if you're doing a build, this is just a guide. So we've come out here at the moment today as of the 17th of the 10th, 635 pounds, 83 pence, which I actually think for 600 pounds, that is a pretty well-rounded system. Yes, you could swap out some things. Potentially you could swap out that motherboard for a cheaper board, maybe a A520M-H, the Gigabyte one I reviewed a little while back, which you could certainly put in there. That would save you about 40 pounds. You could then maybe double up the size of your SSD or maybe convert that to a, a one terabyte NVMe, which would on paper make the system look a lot more attractive. But realistically, I think actually in performance, it wouldn't be massively different. There isn't really much you can do with the 1660 Super as regard to the next upgrade. The next card up on the slot from that, I think to have a noticeable difference, um, it's probably the 2060, but the 2060 is normally, you're looking about 270 if you're lucky. So to squeeze out another 60 pounds out of this system, to turn that into a 2060, I think would struggle. So 
Yeah. yeah. That is uh, that is pretty much where we're at, I think. So, about time I had a look at your comments and suggestions. Whew. If I can remember to do this damn camera thing. So, where are we? Number two. Yay, we're back. And relax. Let's get back into our chat and see what was going on. Okay, so wow, we've got uh, 190 concurrent viewers. Thank you all so much for uh, for joining us tonight. That is uh, that is pretty impressive. Thank you very much. It's always really humbling to see um, a ton of people in watching uh, the live videos. It really is. And let's have a look. So. Uh, <laughs> I might have known that was going to happen. Welsh Tony one uh, says Puff, eighty plus bronze. It's all about the gold. And British Noob says all about a uh, thousand watts. How can you expect to run anything? <laughs> uh, Irie Walpin says I'll sell my thousand watt gold PSU for forty one quid. Done. Send me your PayPal details. I'll, I'll send the money straight over. Uh, Waldo135 says, I want to play Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on the Ryzen 3 3100 with a GTX 1660 in medium in 30 frames per second and above, but I don't if it will, but I don't if it will run Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in medium. Um, I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> Markovsky says, if you don't like RGB then and small form factor, it makes sense. I like both. Good. Uh, Welsh Tony says sixteen sixty super is the mid range king at the moment. Definitely is, and um, yeah, I think this system as it stands for six hundred pounds, give or take. I think it represents really really good value for money. There's a lot worse you could buy. Um, there's a lot of unbalanced systems I've seen, especially on eBay and places like that. Second hand, definitely, um, yeah, definitely, it's worth just looking into it. Look at the games that you're playing as well. If you're playing a lot of games which are heavily biased towards Intel or Nvidia or AMD, or whatever the case may be, that is what you should be concerning yourself with. Don't concern yourself with what you might be doing in the future, or what you're doing now or whatever. It's the games that you want to play or the apps that you want to use. If you're into video editing, depending on what uh, program you're using, if you're using DaVinci, pretty much you're okay with anything. If you're using Premiere, Intel is going to be favoured in that. Also, NVIDIA cars will be as as it comes to rendering and uh, timeline scrubbing, that kind of thing. So those are the things that you should be looking at. If you're looking at just gaming in general, I think this system is uh, particularly well-rounded and will probably last a good few years. Although, also, we don't know what's coming out as of November 5th. If the benchmarks that have been leaked and some of the stuff we've seen already is anything to go by. It looks like it's going to be a pretty decent year for AMD and the Ryzen 5000 series. But having said that, there are still some really good bargains on the market. I could have then redone this system actually with the Ryzen 7 2700X, which is currently on Amazon for £150. That's an 8-core 16-thread processor, which is still a beast in modern-day computing, and for £100 is really good. It does pretty much trade blows with the Ryzen 5 3600 in most tasks. Again, productivity stuff like that, the 2700 is going to win. In general, all around use, snappiness, that general feeling, the uh, Ryzen 5 3600 is going to take it. But bearing in mind the difference between the two in TDP, I'm pretty sure the 2700X is like a 105, the 3600 is a 65 watt part, so you do have to take into consideration cooling with that. With the 2700X, you do get the Wraith Spire, sorry, the Wraith What's the um, top of the range one? I can never remember. Basically the RGB Wraith cooler, which is really good. So you don't necessarily need a different cooler. Uh, our boy George, he's got a 2700X in his computer and he's still using that stock cooler. He has done from day one. So it served him really well and he's basically gaming and video editing all day long, at least when he's not working. So that's worked out really well from him. He paid, I think about 300 pounds when it came out, maybe even more. Um, so for it to now to be half the price is Pretty scary stuff, it really is. Tony's off. Tony off. See you later, Tony. And Gary's sprinkler repairs in high sog. 
Uh, Mike's and Boxing, how are you? Nice to catch another one of your live streams here in Cali. Oh, <laughs> that's it, rub it in. California dreaming. I so want to move to California. I actually looked at places to live in America and there's quite a few that I'm really interested in for the, the foreseeable future, which would be really nice. We'll see. Uh, Markovsky says the 1660 Super makes sense if you want to break 200 pounds on a GPU, but I like the GTX 1070, which is around 180 used in the UK. Um, yeah, Mark, the um, the 1070s are really difficult to get hold of for that sort of money. I've been trying myself recently, and it is really, really difficult. They are a really good card. Between the two, the 1660 Super and the 1070, they kind of trade blows. You do get a bit of extra VRAM on the 1070, but you've got to remember the 1070 now is getting on a bit, so you never know what sort of life it's had, how well it's been looked after. If it's come from someone you know and they've looked after it, then yeah, totally fine. But if not, I really, I would prefer to go with a new card where you obviously know the history, you've got a warranty, uh, if anything goes wrong in the first few days or first whatever, you can send it back if it's Amazon. So yeah, I would definitely, if they're a similar price point, I would always go for the new card. I think as a general rule of thumb, unless you know the exact history of it. Uh, John Sullivan says, I got the Holy, Holy Trinity three builds, the 1700X, the 2700X and the 3700X all great CPUs, the 1700X is still going well. That is, uh, that's pretty cool, the Holy Trinity. Shame there's not gonna be a 4700X, although there might be, we, you never know. <laughs> Ricardo says, live from Hollywood, it's Mike's unboxing live, <laughs> that'll be good. I like to bring also good combo CPU. Oh, mother effer. Gary Spring to repair. Mike's unboxing. Just finished gold panning while the girls swam in the pool. 90 degrees Fahrenheit today. <laughs> That's sickening. That really is sickening. For people like myself and Aletta who've been struggling in these freezing cold temperatures. Man. Sorry, Kath. It's alright. Ugly Bob answered it. Oh, Ugly Bob's answered it. Thank you, Ugly Bob. Ugly Bob, despite his name, is a lovely, beautiful man. Thank you, Ugly Bob. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Dave Burns says, uh, to be honest, the 5600 XT is best matched with a bin. Hashtag NVIDIA for life. <laughs> oh, dear. San Diego is a great choice. Got it. Mark says, yeah, warranty is important. It totally is. It's, um, we get a lot of people on Discord asking questions like, is this processor a good value? Should I buy this? Should I buy that? And it really is a minefield. If you don't know what it is you're buying and you're buying used, it can throw up all kinds of weird, crazy issues where it's, um, sometimes it's easier just to, well, not easier. Sometimes it's more beneficial just to kind of bite the bullet and pay full retail especially with the trusted supplier. At least that way, you've got some form of returns if anything goes wrong. We've all pretty much at some point or other had a CPU with bent pins, have we? On the used market, I know for sure I've had probably a handful, easy. At least one <clears throat> during filming. Yeah, one during filming for definite <laughs> that I know of, probably two, maybe a couple that I bent myself as well. So if you're buying AMD processors used, there's always going to be the chance of that happening, even if it's in postage. Even if you're super careful with it, those pins on the bottom are so fragile. And conversely, if you've bought an Intel motherboard, the pins that stick out on the board on the 1155 and upward sockets, they are a real pain. And it takes one of them to be out of line and not match up with a pad on the CPU. And mostly it's game over unless you're really, really careful and you can kind of get some uh, magnifying glass and tweezers and move all that stuff back into place, it is really, really difficult to do. So, um, yeah, it's, buying a second hand is always risky. If you're buying a second hand and you're buying a product 
which is approximately the same kind of speed or value or whatever, just buy it new. It really makes sense to buy it new if you possibly can. Uh, Dave Bell says I snagged a £85 used laptop from Box, dead on arrival and six month warranty. It does happen. <laughs> Kieran Atkins says that just don't play overclockers prices. This is very, very true. Uh, Mali says, why not this case, the Techware Forge MTG? Now, actually, complete disclosure, the Techware Forge that I bought myself personally and reviewed on the channel, I actually sent back. I sent it back to Amazon. There was something about that case. I don't know. I don't know how to... How do I quantify it? It's a really... In pretty much every way, that case was perfect for the price but there was just something about it i don't know whether it's the quality of the metal i think that was the real bone of contention for me it was a 55 pounds oh thank you Kath. it was a 55 pound case from amazon which isn't inexpensive it's kind of in the ballpark of where you should be for that case what it comes with etc etc but the thing for me was the quality of the metal now i did have, i've got a few other cases here which i use on a daily basis and the cheapest of them all, which I think at the moment was the, the Colink Overseer Lite or whatever it was, which is what Cap's PC is, that is a budget case. And the metal on that was slightly thicker than the one on the Techware, which made me kind of, am I paying a bit too much of a premium for this case, even though it does look nice and the RGB is nice and all that kind of stuff. At this, which point then I took out my Colink Citadel and had another closer look at that because that was the two cases that I was left with. And comparing the two side by side, taking them apart, looking at them, it was like, yeah, the Citadel is is actually the better case. So I will kept the Citadel, so that's when I'll be doing the builds in. The Techware 4 Gem is still a good case, but for me, the flimsy metal kind of lost it for me a little bit. I don't know what it is. Maybe um, I'm getting a little bit old or whatever, but I'm starting to appreciate the value of a nice sturdy case. Uh, like I said, in this one, the S100 TG the Thermal Take, really nice case, and the metal on it is very well constructed. I've seen a few reviews. I've actually seen one in real life as well. I've not owned one myself, but it's a very solid case. It's structurally very sound. Uh, you don't get those weird rattles and rumbles in resonance go through the case as you do with some of the cheaper cases with thinner metal. So I think it's always a good way of um, building a system. Spend a little bit of money on a case, it doesn't have to be a, a bargain basement case. They are available and there is a market for them, but it's always nice to have a, a slightly more premium case, I think, and it, it adds something to the build, I think. Anyway, an open beer, so let's get that uh, opened. A letter says, crappy internet, you just dropped to 360p and still struggling. Oh dear, that don't sound good. Cheers, everybody. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the stream so far. Hmm. Oh, needed that. Too much exercise on the exercise bike. Need beer to uh, maintain the equilibrium. Okay. Um, so Mally says, how about this case, the Cougar MG130G? I've not tried it. Uh, I'm not even looked at it actually. So I might have to. Might have to have a look at that one. Kieran Atkinson says, I love the Colink Observatory. Reminds me of a Corsair case. Um, yeah, the Colink Observatory actually reminds me very much of that one. It's that front section. Ugly Bob says bottoms up. <laughs> Gary says spend extra money on a case. Are you sick? I'm not, but I think it is justifiable. It, it is. Like... The cases that I've got in the house now, I've got my Game Max F15, which I still love to this day. It's a great case. 70 quid, give or take, spot on. 70 quid well spent. 
underneath the desk, I've got my Inwin, the um, the fabric case. Alice. Inwin Alice, thank you. Where am I? 55 quid. Awesome case, because even though it's plastic and fabric, it's really well made. Oh, I thought it was because you liked undressing it. And I did like undressing it, to be fair. Um, the Co-Link Citadel, again, good price. I can't even remember how much that is now. It's like 40 quid, 50 quid. Good quality case, really strong metal, all that kind of stuff. Timber glass was a little bit on the thin side on that, but other than that, very, very solid, very rigid. Just works really well. Money well spent. That one behind me, the... Um... Which am I going? <laughs> Lunatic. Um, the Corsair 465X. Brilliant case, love it. It's uh, very well built. It's a shame it hasn't got an extra fan at the back. I'm determined to get myself an LL120 in the back, but I'm not paying stupid prices for it, so it might have to wait. Gary Sprinkler Repair sent in a super chat of uh, $4.99 and says, Mike's unboxing is so helpful, right? Right on, and your helpful donation is helping grow the channel and also to trim some of that fat off of Calf's ass. So thank you for that. Did you say thank you, Calf? Thank you. Say it later. So Thank you. I've said it in the comments. Oh, she said it in the comments. Okay. Thank you, Gary. See, Calf's thankful as well. Uh, Markovsky says, I've only got one bling case. Uh, all the rest are practical for the job they do. Practicality should, in theory, win out. Now, I'm, I'm unfortunate in a lot of respects that I've got this channel, which may, some of you are probably thinking like, like the meme on Discord, like, huh? question marks everywhere but it does actually have a bearing on the things i buy and the things i get generally i consider most of the stuff to need to look nice so aesthetics do come into it so practicality kind of goes out the window a little bit even though practicality does make a lot of sense and there's another super chat from our good friend from the discord the british noob and he said they're two pounds for the bum workout calf would you say thanks noob she says thanks. <laughs> uh, Alexa says, my case is well worth the $200 I paid. That is what it comes down to. It is, is your case worth it? If you look at your case and you think, man, that stuff looks dope in there. It really does look absolutely fantastic. Whether you've got a custom mod going on in there, Wherever you've just got like a really um, plain monochrome build that it just looks great. Noob's broken the bloody thing. No, that's it. Cast mended it. Ultimately, if your case looks good, it's worth every single penny you paid for it. If your PC is on in the background and you can hear it vibrating or there's a panel in there which is just resonating with the rest of the system because it's made of cheap metal, it just gives you a really weird feeling about the whole system. It's like, if you've got to keep on nudging the side of it just to stop it resonating, that's not a great experience. It really isn't. Smart calf, might have a focus. You are. Looks okay on there. It's the stream. No, it wasn't. So mine's like blurry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine's blurry on there, but it's crisp on there. Are we dropping frames? No, we're not dropping any frames. I think it's back now. Are we back? Yeah, it's back now. Yeah, so that is um, focus, camera. I might be actually. Have I gotten drunk? Possibly. <laughs> Matthew Day says something very controversial, which uh, some of you may agree with, some of you may not. Matthew Day says, if I can have my DVD drives, I'm happy. I miss DVD drives. There, I said it. I feel like I've just come out. It's, uh, yeah, I miss DVD drives. They were pretty cool. And I recently I missed it more than ever because I've been getting sent things to test, projectors we've been sent to test, headphones, and it'd be like, oh, let's, let's stick a DVD, oh, crap. I haven't got a DVD player in my computer to actually project, which is so, so much of a pain in the ass. So I ended up going on to Amazon and then um, playing some previews. And then you do the video and then you get a copyright strike because you've got a snippet of bloody gravity. Trailer. 
a trailer of gravity. Really, Warner Brothers? You're advertising it, your film. If it wasn't for the fact that Warner Brothers was, was responsible for Batman at some points, oh. On the outside, <laughs> I did, I did. Uh, British Noob says, well done, Mike, for coming out. Right on, brother. Aletta says, is Mike fuzzy or have I drank too much? Uh, no. I'm actually clean shaven today. Clean shaven head and face. I was looking like a right homeless person up until this morning. Uh, Ricardo says, I need to, I need a new internal DVD burner. Yeah, I just want to, uh, I've got some DVDs that I just, I've even got some Blu-rays. I would actually quite like to watch them. I refuse to use the PlayStation because PlayStation. It needs to and it'll probably yeah. Updates. It will need probably all the updates before I can do anything. In which time I'll be like, no, I'm over it now. I don't want to do it. You missed a couple. Tech solution Hindi is new here. Uh, where is that? Up a bit. Tech solution. Tech solution Hindi says hello. I'm new here. Mali's hello, good sir. I'm assuming that's a sir. Tech Solution Hindi. That could be it either way. So welcome anyway. Male, female, undecided, not bothered. We don't uh we don't judge. Sorry, Kath, what was that? Mally above said he's got the Game Max F15 because of you. Hey, there we go. Mally says I got the Game Max F15 thanks to your channel recommendation, and I'm delighted, thank you. Don't thank me, thank Game Max. There they made it. And actually, for anyone who's looking at the Game Max F15, maybe also consider the uh, Lian Li, the 215, I think it is, which is basically the same case. Pretty much. And Free Canal says greetings from Poland. Free Canal from Poland. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not even drunk and just talking rubbish. Uh, Waldo 135 says, I'm looking for the Game Max F15. Game Max F15 is an awesome case. I think it's actually probably, I would argue, the best case that Game Max have ever made. So much so that Lian Lee copied it. Well, not copied it, but they use the same design. Kieran says, so far I'm loving the in-win Saturns in my DF600. Uh, really good. I have them at around 849 RPM, give or take. Uh, as anything louder, I can hear them. Yeah, up to about... I think, yeah, I remember about to about 900, I think they were pretty much undetectable. John Sullivan says, I'm really happy with the F15. Thanks, Mike. There seems to be a lot of you that have uh, cottoned on to the F15. It is one of those kind of little hidden gems that I think a lot more people will buy. I think the reason a lot of people haven't bought them is purely for availability. They do seem to be in pretty short supply right now. Alan Huggins RX 5600 XT and Ryzen 5 3600X. Do you recommend a motherboard? Um, hmm. Choices are Micro ATX or ATX, depending on what case you've got. I would say of that kind of level, I would probably go with maybe the MSI B550 Pro-A or A-Pro. That seems to be a really good board, good price, good VRM, very well uh, received. If you want a micro ATX version, then I would say... Um, ATX NZXT. All oh, right. Okay, so ATX NZXT, that's fine. So yeah, I would say the MSI B550 uh, A-Pro or Pro-A, whichever is uh, exactly the same thing. That, for me, is uh, one of those kind of ticks most boxes kind of motherboards. It's essentially it's as good almost as the B550 Tomahawk, which is probably one of the better B550 boards. Good price, works for me. Um. <laughs> Dave Burns and um, Ugly Bob, thank you. Uh, da -da. <laughs> okay, so I think actually that pretty much is going to wrap things up. 
I don't think there's anything else I can say. Again, if you're... Um... Oh, bloody hell, Kath said I've got to tell you what... We've got to discuss some of the videos we've done this week. Because he made me write it out. Because I said I, you never read them out. We've actually had two things from Joby this week. I've actually got a third thing, which I haven't done yet, but that'll be coming up next week, hopefully. So the Joby Wavo mic and the Joby Bemo light, which some of you probably seen on last Saturday's stream. Man, that thing is so bright. It is so cool. I really love it. And actually, I found the perfect use for it, which has got nothing to do with photography whatsoever. And it, well, actually two uses, one of which was um, in the UK here. It's getting pretty dark at night. And I actually found the magnetic bit on the Joby light really handy for checking the oil levels and the water levels in my car because I just opened up the bonnet, stuck it to the the, um, the inside of the the hood, I guess you'd call it in America. Hood? Yeah, hood's front, trunk's rear. So I attached the metal magnetic bit to the hood, lift the hood up, and I could see everything that was going on in the car, check all the uh, antifreeze, water, oil, all that kind of stuff. It was really, really cool for that. But also another thing is, I don't know about you, but I absolutely hate wiring up the front panel connectors on PCs. They're always in a stupid place and you can never see them very well. And even with the best of intentions with the light, it's really difficult. So the Joby Bemo, I know it's not designed for this at all, but it's actually really handy. Just stick it in the case. It's magnetic, awesome. Stick it on the side. And if you stick it on the side, you get the light shining off the pins, so they show up even more. So yeah, when, so when you're putting that in, yeah, Ugly Bob did mention it as well. Absolutely brilliant, fantastic solution. A slightly expensive solution, but as an additional thing that you can do with it, those Joby lights are like the three-in-one oil. You can basically, in like WD-40, they've got, there's something you can use it for in every situation. So you put some RGB around the bonnet? Get some RGB inside your bonnet, that would be good. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Uh, Bradman says evening. Evening to you. And James Miscellaneous as well in the house. Good evening to you. Uh, also, this week we did the money saving thing for a camel, camel, camel. Actually, I'm, I didn't mention it. Did any of you pick up some really cool bargains on Amazon Prime Day? I've got to be honest with you. Actually, what the hell did I buy? I did buy something. You bought that. A projector. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Guys, this projector... i got to clear some room, because this is incredible. This projector is a 720p projector. It gives a 1080p output. The review is re recorded already, because I said I already got a copyright strike for it. So I have to re-record it. But this projector, for 12, 11 pounds? 10.99, wasn't it? 10.99. Um, oh shit, I'll put it out there now. <laughs> Don't, don't worry, Kath. It's a crap box anyway. Basically, you have to see it. This is um, a spoiler alert. It's brilliant. For £11, yeah, total no-brainer. £70 retail price. Well, I'll let you be the judge of it when you see the footage on it. It's some awesome footage. And it gave me another excuse to play some Flight Sim 2020 on a projector, which if any of you have played that game, you'll know that any lag is really, really distracting and off-putting, and there was no lag. So if you're looking for a projector, Definitely, definitely worth a look. CB2011 says, no way, mine was cancelled. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Incredible. Uh, yeah, so that was my uh, that was my only Prime Day deal. Sad times. Uh, so we did the video on Microsoft FS2020 this week as well. To, that was for Waldo, because... Oh, Waldo. Sometimes... <laughs> Anyway, moving on. So, and the other one was swapping a graphics card, which is kind of related because we'll be doing the same test in the Flight Sim 2020 with the 1650 Super and then comparing that against the RX 570, which are kind of almost in a similar ballpark price wise. <laughs> James Messina says, Wow, why so many dislikes? It's got to be the way he says cooler. <laughs> dislikes dislikes are good people still don't realize that dislike doesn't actually affect me it affects you the viewer so if you click on dislike it's unlikely this video or other content by me will appear in your stream which is fine because if you don't like it then i'm i don't want you to watch it why would you say like sadistic maybe i don't know 
If you, if you click on the like button, it means you like the content and you're more likely to get my videos suggested in your feed. But actually monetary wise or whatever, clicking on dislike is actually cool because it's interaction on the channel, which means the channel's being watched and the video's being watched, so it goes up a bit. So yeah, click on the dislike we like, it's all good. Paul Bakewell says, hello, made it at last. Gary says, Kerry Holdman sending dislikes. <laughs> I don't mind. Dislikes are cool. Dislikes and likes, again, it doesn't affect the channel in any way, shape, or form. You can tell that because in the YouTube metrics, normally the highest ranking stuff is at the top. As you go down, you get other things, and somewhere right down the bottom somewhere is your um, dislike ratio. So it's so far down on YouTube's list of things, priorities, it makes no difference whatsoever. Click Tech Kev says, why do I see Kerry's videos in my stream? <laughs> now that's actually another point. If you watch someone's videos and you click on dislike, if then YouTube then throws up another video and you go into it and you dislike it again, because you've interacted with that video rather than ignoring it, it thinks, hmm, okay. Because you've actually watched it and you've watched maybe even just a few seconds of the start of the video, that is still earned money for YouTube because obviously it's played an advert at the start of the video. So the content creator, me or whoever, gets paid, YouTube gets paid, and the algorithm gets zeroed. So the next time you go into the video, click on dislike, and it's like, okay, what do I do now? So you confuse the algorithm, so they'll just keep on showing you the stuff anyway. If it's a related thing, so in the tech field, if you watch other tech videos and you dislike some tech videos from some channels, there's a very, very strong chance if you even watch those channels anyway, even after disliking them, they're still going to appear in your feed. Now, for any of you that have already done this before and you've clicked on dislike on various videos and they've still appeared, that's because the dislike button generally doesn't mean anything. It's just an interaction. It's an interaction. The like button doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get more of it in your content feed. The algorithm is messed up. It really is. Mally says, any more info about this APU only case review? What about, what about, what about, what was that? Any more info about this APU only case review, please? Um, well, the APU only case review is, I, I like the thought of making a media center PC. Generally, they are prohibitively expensive if you make them as small as possible, i.e. kind of non APU systems. So it's definitely something that we're gonna have to work out if it's actually worthwhile doing. I would really, really love to see one of the 4,000 APUs, which are starting to filter through the market a little bit. Sometimes you have to get them imported or get them off eBay, but they are available through some channels. So I really would like to do a video with that, with one of the 16 core APUs, which are available with 4,000 series. I think that'd make very interesting content. There is also coming up a standalone version, I believe, of the X300 chipset from ASRock, and possibly a case to go with it as well. So. That's something I've been looking at, but I don't have any specific things at the moment, so we'll have to do a, see where it goes. Um, Ugly Bob says, what videos have you got coming up next week? So next week we have got the bargain projector video. We've got... Um, the diary. There, what have I done uploaded already? We've got... Calf's looking through the diary, because I don't remember. I just film them, I don't know Projector. what's in them. Projector was one, definitely. The new mic. Oh, new microphone. I bought another one of the Boya microphones. The one that I'm using at the moment is the Boya BYM1, which I've used for like three, four years now, and it's done really, really well. But I did record a video the other day, and there was some weird crackling coming in, so I don't know whether, I did actually stand on the cable, and I do stand on the cable all the time, as you probably notice in the streams. And whenever I've done anything, it's like, oh shit, I've stood on the cable, nearly ripped the mic out. So it's had a pretty hard life and yeah, it gets caught on stuff. So I thought I'll try another one. And Boya, I've actually released another version of this, the powered lav mic, which is the Boya BYM1 Pro, which is basically an upgraded version of this. So I have got it, I've tested it. I'm not gonna tell you what the outcome is. You'll have to watch it in the video to find out exactly well, actually, I want your opinion, which one you think sounds better. 
I'm, watch to the end. I'm on the fence, but do watch to the very end of the video. Otherwise, you will not get the full gist of it. There is a reason behind it. You'll have to watch the entire video. So please, please do watch the entire video. Uh, that's all I'll say for that. Um, also, what's the other one we did? PC. Oh, did the PC one. Did we do something else as well? NVIDIA graphics card installer? That was up on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was... Yeah. We did that. That's Swap the graphics card. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, because um, someone else did it very shortly after. You know who you are. Um, moving on. <laughs> Do it! Uh, James Miscellaneous says, Mike, talk about money and bullies for three hours straight like you know who. <laughs> oh, dear. John Sullivan says, my work were checking out old PCs. I nabbed an old HP Elite desk and threw in some M.2s and SSDs, and it makes a good media center. I might need to get a low-profile GPU for it at some point. Uh, Ugly Bob says, is that the one with the muff? No. It didn't have a muff. The BYM1 Pro, does, there's no you muff. Did, you did mention a muff, though. It's got a windshield, pop shield, but it doesn't have a wind muff. But you called it a muff. Did I? Yeah, because I thought Ugly Bob would love that. Oh. Ugly Bob does like some muff in his content. He really does. Irie Wolfman says, when is the lockdown party? Well, lockdown party... Lockdown is... We are in lockdown, pretty much all of us, aren't we? We're all in our little virtual prisons at the moment. It's a ridiculous state of affairs, but I'm not going to go into that. But we're not. We're in tier one, aren't we? Yeah, we're tier one at the moment, so which the means basically... Pub shut at 10. Yeah, pub shut at 10. Not that we go to the pub. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Ugly Bob says at Kath Churchill he should do post credit scenes. Yes. We have on a We have on a few videos. I think Sky's the only one who's ever noticed, to be honest. James Miscellaneous says, um, I'll replay blah, blah. I'll be replaying this from the start later. I like Mike's take on things. I have actually got on another tab here the previous system which I did, which is about seven hundred pounds. Um, if there's enough of you that are watching at the moment and you want to have a little bit, normally we tend to end the stream around about 11 o'clock here in the UK. That's because Dave usually Because Dave normally does his stream, but being as Dave is not doing his stream, how many of you want to take another look at my previous PC part picker build and rip that to shreds? Let me know in the comments. If you want to see it, then let me know. Uplink says, your Discord is so amazing. Helped me so much with my first ever build. Couldn't recommend more. Oh, thank you. And thank everyone who's helped Uplink. Yeah, thanks everyone who helped Uplink. Um, I'm not sure what your name was in the doodah. <laughs> Rory O'Donnell. That is, uh, oh, it's I'm unhidden now, so you can all see it. I'll just let it go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as, as Rory okay. says, speaking of muff... Uh, please let your viewers know that it's Vagina Awareness Week on Monday. <laughs> um, there's not really... Uh... Ugly Bob answers with Dave Burns, do it. Do it. <laughs> okay. Right, so, thank you, that's your build, not Vagina Week. Right, no one's... It doesn't look like anybody wants to see the other build, so maybe we won't bother doing that. Maybe it's already gone for way too long already. Yeah, it's like tumbleweed. It's like, no, I can't cope with that again. Ugly Bob says it's okay, I'm already aware. Good work, Bob. <laughs> Captain Meets Adventures, Muffin Doodar, the new police show coming to ITV, which I won't be able to watch because we haven't got a TV license anymore. Although our son's got very into like really old TV shows from the 80s now, hasn't he? British Noob says, review some other people's builds. Cough, cough, <coughs> my Intel one. Yeah. Mike's unboxing stream chats. The place to go for for rapidly deteriorating sexual innuendos. It does happen, unfortunately. Who brought up the muff though? I don't know, me or was it? I don't know. Uplink says I have a 2060 and a Ryzen 5 3600. Should I upgrade? Um, no. 
Not really. I don't think so. No, I think that's uh well that's what I'm using at the moment, and I don't really need to upgrade, it'd be nice to, but it does everything I need it to. That is ultimately what it comes down to. Does it do everything you need it to? If it does, hey, stick with it. Uh, Kartik Sharma says, love from India. Did you know, pop trivia, Mike's unboxing reviews on how to is actually more popular in India than it is in UK. Canada and most of Europe. Now, I know India is a big place and a lot of people use YouTube over there, so kind of to be expected. But in a moment, India is the third highest watched country for Mike's unboxing. It's pretty cool. USA is number one, UK is number two, India is number three. So to all of you in those countries for watching and for any other countries, thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> uh, Kenny D says, do you not have a TV license? Kenny D, do you not have a TV license? No, we don't actually have, well, we don't really have a TV. We do have TVs, but they tend to end up being monitors. For computers, so they're not technically TVs. We don't watch live TV. Oh, we don't listen to the radio, years. and our terrestrial TV area on the roof is basically knackered. So we don't really have a way of receiving terrestrial TV or digital terrestrial TV, and we, we don't watch it. We don't watch it. Yeah, I could spend 160 pounds much better on computer components. Actually, that's a weird one because when I first thought about it, I thought. £160, that's a Ryzen 5 3600. They've actually gone up to 180 now, so that shows how much they've gone up in price recently. And I thought the TV license was there. There. <laughs> uh, Danielle Emberley says, still using the Synology for backup, uh, back to bus, snapshots and hyper backup. Currently, the Synology is, um, I'm using it for backing up my main system, so it backs up my OneDrive, so if that ever goes whatever, then that's backed up. Also, it backs up my reusable assets for the YouTube channel, and also I use it as a storage area for any completed content that I've done, which I may need to revisit or borrow footage from, B-roll, that kind of stuff, or just for reference purposes, that is all shipped across. So as soon as it's been in my completed folder for about a week, I then bulk store it onto the NAS, which actually works really well. Um, <clears throat> Mark's off. Thanks, Mark. Catch you later. Ow. Uplink, any recommendations for RGB fans and an AIO? <laughs> I was just about to grab that. Funny you should mention it, because there is a combination of the two. So we actually got sent this today. This has only just arrived today. This is the new XPG Levant 240mm AIO RGB combo radiator, etc. etc. This is using the very latest Acer Tech pumps and uses uh, XPG's custom 120mm addressable RGB fans. It does look to be very good, so I'm actually very, very looking forward to uh, seeing what this is like. We will be doing this. I'm not too sure when I'm going to be doing this. I really want to get a new CPU to test it with, but getting a new CPU at this time is not a great idea, unless I can find a real bargain. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think the Ryzen 5 3600 is really kind of pushing this to its extremes. But anyway, might be worth a look. Dave Burns says, Cafeteria pending review. I'd like first dibs on that AIO. <laughs> uh, for those of you that are wondering what that is about, a lot of the stuff that we review on the channel, um, I don't really kind of sell it on, but I do offer it up to people in the Discord for a, a token donation to cover postage and uh, posting and packing, that sort of stuff. Ugly Bob says, my God, it's like a rainbow in a blender. <laughs> It is. It is. Uh, oh, that's bad. If they go on defund the UK, um, defund the BBC, yeah. they tell you what you can and can't watch. Yes, go on to defund the BBC and um, you can find out on there 
what you can and cannot watch. Basically, you can watch anything that the BBC have produced, if yeah, it's yeah. on YouTube or stuff like that, as long as it isn't a live broadcast. You can't watch any live TV. No live TV whatsoever from either Channel 4, ITV, or any of those terrestrial channels which are supported by the television licence. Anything on catch up, but not iPlayer. Matthew Day says, got an AMD FX to test it with. That's not a bad idea, actually. That would be a really good show. <laughs> Kieran, you bad monkey. Um, Kieran's, the other day on Discord, I thought for a laugh, I would get people to look at a new uh, APU on Amazon, which is the, uh, the 4300G. Now, for those of you that are in work watching this and you're going to go and Google it now or look on Amazon, it's possibly not safe for work. It may make you chuckle. I'm not going to spoil it for you. So if you want to, open up your Amazon browser. It is adult themed. Just type in uh, 4300G. You'll see what we mean. It, it was quite funny. A letter says D5 pump or go home. I'm surprised the letter with her technology and her love of vehicles hasn't managed to get some kind of electric pump from a, a car, maybe a fuel pump or something like that into a PC. Get some serious pressure going. Uh, Mally says, ask... Could you try again? I said Sirius, which is like Siri. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> You're not supposed to. Shut your ass. Um, yeah, Mally says, Azrock's uh, X300 review would bring in a lot of viewers to this channel, in my honest opinion. It will, and I'm definitely going to get one. The X3, I wanted the uh, A300 PC, and I very nearly got one uh, myself and Dave Aitken. We're both looking at one. We did find one on eBay, a used one, which came with the Noctua Slimline Cooler as well, which would have been absolutely perfect. But unfortunately, I got outbid at the end, so I've been waiting for another one to come along. But now that the X300 is going to come out, it seems a bit daft to go and get an A300 when the X300 is kind of within spitting distance. They are apparently out in various countries. I think they're out in India and stuff. But uh, here in the UK, nobody's got X300s for sale anywhere. So if anybody can find me an X300 from ASRock, the new desk mini, send me a link or drop an email. Uh, it's at the bottom there. I would appreciate that a lot. And up links. <laughs> oh dear. NZXT RGB A iOS because that is two no A E R two the lights broke after thirty one days. Oh that sucks. The lights broke after thirty one days. Watch got told. Yeah it does. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, up links and Ghost Adder helped me on Discord. Ghost Adder is a good lad. Uh, Guitar Giveaway Channel says, where do you get the live unboxing banner from the bottom of your stream? Um, I just made it up in Photoshop, I think it was. Pretty simple to do. If you want one, um, I could probably make you one for you. Yeah, you could use MS Paint, anything like that. It's a, it's a pretty easy one to do. James Miscellaneous says, Mike's unboxing reviews and how to. That's me. Um, do you use a wired or wireless lapel mic when you stream? Uh, currently, it's a wired one. It's the... The, the video, yeah. Yeah, there is actually a video out on it in one or two days. It's the Boya BY-M1 microphone. It's got a massive cable, six meter cable. So I can sit here at the table with the camera right over there and the cable's all the way around there. And so you can walk around and do a bit. Or if need be, oh, I've, over I've run over the cable. That's never going to work. That's probably why it doesn't work very well at times, because I keep on running over the cable. It is a long cable. Um, wireless mics, generally, in a relatively small room, especially if you've got a lot of gadgets around you, is going to be a real ball ache, and you're going to spend more time trying to work out the right channels and frequencies to use than you are actually editing your videos. I had the... Uh, I'm trying to think of the brand, actually. Which brand of wireless mic did I have, Kath? Is it... Was that a Boya as well? What, before? The wireless ones. I had two, oh, didn't I? That Boya. I had a Boya one. I had a WM5, I think it was. And there was another one I had as well. I can't think of what the name of that was. Both of them were really good and they worked excellently. But because um, at one point I did have a RGB light bulb here. 
and every time the RGB light bulb was on and I got remotely near to it, the microphone would just pick up crazy uh, like 2.4 gigahertz spectrum noises because most microphones, wireless ones, are on that 2.5 gigahertz spectrum. They can interfere. So yeah, if you're using it in the home, you've got loads of wireless devices around you, just really be careful because it... Uh, it can cause you a lot of pain. And also you've got to keep on putting batteries in the damn things where this thing has got a, a single LR44 battery. I remember that from the review. And I'm not gonna take it now. It's only got a single battery and that battery has been in there pretty much since the day I bought it. And from what I can tell, it only uses that battery when the device actually starts up, when you connect it. So it actually works out what it's connected to. After that, it shuts itself down and doesn't need it. So you've left it on overnight. Yeah, I have left it on overnight at least a good 20, 30 times I've left this on overnight in the on position and the battery still keeps on going. So I'm pretty sure it only uses it to initialize the circuitry in there for the TRRS or TRS. Something like that. <laughs> Aletta says the uh, 4500G looks on Amazon looks sweet, lol. Yeah, you guys like that, didn't you? I thought. There's uh, it's pretty good, pretty funny. I actually caught myself out on that because I was looking for processors and I was thinking there's, there's got to be a, a 4000 series APU on Amazon somewhere. So I thought, um, what are the what are the likely part numbers? So I put in 4300G and straight away on Amazon, it's like, oh, wow, what the hell? I think the same happened with the 2200Gs. It's a funny world we live in. It really is. Tristan G says, time to smoke. 420 here in Seattle on Saturday for tech. Four. We're not allowed We're not allowed to 420 in the UK. Although we do on the 4th and 20th of April. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Mitch Hammond says, hi, Mike. How you doing, Mitch? And Tristan G as well. Hi, Mike and all. You said Tristan G was doing smoke. Yeah, no, I read the top one, then I read the bottom one, because I'm like, I'm doing it like the Quran, reading it all backwards, if that's the thing. <coughs> uh, da -da, da -da. Yeah, I think that was pretty much it. We've gone way over way way over our time limit now so that pretty much is going to be it for tonight's stream thank you all so much for taking part and thanks for being part of our record numbers uh over 200 concurrent viewers in the live stream which for a small channel like ours is totally amazing so thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to spend some time with us don't forget tomorrow if you want to spend a little bit more kind of adult time with us on dave aiken's stream over on the IKEA thing, IKEA Shadow Stream on the Twitch. Link, IKEA. Link, it will be over there. IKEA's gonna chuck it in now. Uh, to all the regulars, thank you all so much for taking time and also for the super chats, all that kind of stuff. For all the newbies that have joined us tonight for the first time, hopefully you've enjoyed yourselves. And don't forget to smash the like button and the subscribe button and the chime icon or do the dislike button, I don't really care, it's such you. But smash some buttons anyway, because it all helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you can do, please, please, please do come back at some point later in the day after the video's finished uploading all that sort of stuff. And just put some rubbish in the comment section. It really does help with the old algorithm for YouTube. Man, I am such a YouTube whore, I really am. <laughs> Even if you are lonely or... Yeah. Yeah, if you're lonely or got no one to talk to, maybe you're sat on the crapper and just got nothing no, better to do. Spots. Just... Um, just type it in there. In the bots, you're always very welcome. Stick those comments in bots. We love you all very much. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you all so much for taking part. Thanks for the super chats. And we will catch you in the very next video. Take it all easy. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.